All right, people, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. That way you'll know when I upload the next video and you'll be supporting my channel. Follow me on Twitter. Every time I upload a new video, I'll be tweeting. Ladies and gents, welcome to GUX, and this is the Bronze Age Collapse, Fire and Sword, Extra History Part 3, where the channel extra credits. Yeah. At last, we have the sea people. Yeah, we, we're gonna see the sea people who's gonna attack, I guess, in this one. Marauders, right, who sweep into the Bronze Age societies, ground them into dust. The people that have been constantly saying that there is, you know, a certain type of people called sea people, apparently. Since we have not much knowledge of that period of time, we just call them sea people, I guess. Probably was some kind of an empire, at least. Because, you know, they attack many different cities. Or it could be just multiple type of people attack, you know, just coincidentally at this, around the same time multiple places. And we just think it was just one empire. I don't know. But yeah, this is really fascinating thing. The Bronze Age of Collapse. Uh, Bronze Age around the time where, you know, Egyptian Marcinians and other uh, societies who were really advanced. They made uh, stable structures, right? Uh, lots of, you know, buildings and type of things. Towers. Uh, we know how Mycenaeans build a different type of, you know, housings and things with baths and everything. After then, there was a dark period when some nothing like that was ever built. That just makes me think that, you know, I'm just imagining certain, you know, I guess people who used to live in hut, just walking around basically and just seeing these buildings like, God damn, who were these people? Because it have been a few decades by then, I guess, so, you know, no knowledge of who the people were. I guess somewhat, you know, stories and myths probably survived there, like there used to be people who used to live here, this and that. But that would have been so weird to see, people walking around just thinking, hmm, people used to make this and we don't know how to make it. I mean, imagine, you know, I guess in a few decades, we forget how to make skyscrapers and shit, right? I mean, we have basic technology understanding, sure, but not how, not the, you know, advanced engineering and things like that. And we just walk around this, des you know, abandoned type of cities and things. It's abandoned because we don't know how to maintain them. But abandoned cities, that just makes us wonder, like, what the fuck? Who made this? And how did we lose their knowledge of this? That's just surreal. So let's watch this one. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the Excited Day, there's a link in the description, check out the cards for check out the link cards in here. Let's watch it. In Ugarit, a once prosperous fortified city on the Syrian coast, archaeologists discovered a clay tablet, upon which was written an answer to someone's plea for help. It read, My father, behold, the enemy's ships came, my cities were burned and they did evil in my country. All my troops and chariots are in the land of Hatti, and all my ships are in the land of Luka. The country is abandoned to itself. But Whoa. this response to some other king's plea for aid was never delivered. It was found still lying in the kiln, and around that kiln were found the remnants of Ugarit, burnt to the ground and littered with foreign-made arrows. This is one of the only records we have of a world coming apart. God damn, this is a grim sight. For archaeologists, that's a, a fucking a gold mine when they discover some forgotten city like that. But at the same time, imagine being one of the archaeologists finding that city. All those foreign arrows there, finding this tablet and realizing what happened here. That's just grim. If you've heard anything about the Bronze Age collapse, you've probably heard the tale of mysterious marauders from the sea suddenly appearing on the coasts of the ancient world. They pillaged, they burned, and then they disappeared from history just as suddenly as they came. These are the Sea People. We have a few records mentioning these invaders, most of them from Egypt, and most of these Egyptian records are simply proclamations to the world that Egypt was able to face the Sea People where other nations had fallen. As an inscription by Ramses III proclaimed, those who reached my boundary, their seed is not. Their hearts and their souls are finished forever and ever. As for those who have assembled before them on the sea, the full flame was their front before the harbor mouths, and a wall of metal upon the shore surrounded them. They were dragged, overturned, and laid low upon the beach, slain and made heaps from stern to bow of their galleys, while all their things were cast upon the water. But as awesome as such inscriptions are, we do have to ask, how much were they intended as propaganda, and how much were they intended as an accurate record of historical fact? Because we know that Egypt didn't stop the Sea People. No one did. So who were these enigmatic terrors from the sea? Nobody knows. 
Imagine Rams is basically writing that letter on the tablet while C people is, I guess, hitting him on his head and he's struggling to just write it. Oh, the history will remember this differently, I tell you. It's one of the great mysteries embedded in the larger mystery of the Bronze Age collapse. To make matters worse, the Sea People might not have been one people. Historians have identified at least nine different groups or there tribes that make up the various waves of Sea People, and we're not even certain that all of them were actually outside invaders. Some hypothesize that certain groups of these amphibious attackers were the Biblical Philistines. Others suggest that the Sea People were simply unpaid mercenaries, or peoples in revolt. But when considering historical mysteries, I always try to ask whether events are causal or symptomatic. Were the Sea People the reason for the Bronze Age collapse, or merely a symptom that made it worse? Let's look at what I think are the two broad possibilities. One, that the Sea People were invaders from outside the core Bronze Age kingdoms, or two, that the Sea People were made up of factions from inside the Bronze Age kingdoms, moving about as armed groups. Let's consider the first possibility. In this case, there would have had to be a reason that all of these mysterious people took to the sea and decided to attack what in the past had seemed like strong and defensible kingdoms. Something must have displaced them, and something must have convinced them that they could win this fight. This implies to me that the Sea People were symptomatic to the Bronze Age collapse, that some other cause drove them to attack, and that- Or some one. Uh, one leader probably united these people into attacking. Why not? Right? One charismatic leader, fierce leader could have basically, you know, gathered all these different group into one goal to topple these empires and take their riches. It's possible. Right? I mean, you know, it's nothing happened that gave them balls, like, you know, all this civilization didn't collapse like that. That just showed these people that this is a golden opportunity, anything like that. But just one guy basically united them and said that, you know, if under my banner, we'll take this civilization down. I mean, it's possible. The unknown name, right? Unknown emperor or whatever, unknown tribal leader or something. Something else had to have weakened the Bronze Age kingdoms before they got there. So what about the other possibility? If the Sea People came from within the Bronze Age kingdoms, as either mercenaries or people in revolt, then we have to ask ourselves, why did they revolt now? These societies had existed under fairly consistent conditions for thousands of years. Seriously. So what led people to rise up right then? Well, either the kingdoms were in a weakened state, giving the people reason to think that they could overthrow them, or the people's own situation had deteriorated to such a point that they believed the gamble was worth it. Either way, it again implies that some other event started the decline before the sea people started to arrive. I mean, I guess, you know, yeah, pyramids of Giza at this point were as older as, you know, uh, Vikings are to us at this point, I guess, you know, multiple centuries, eight, nine centuries or something, if I remember correctly. So yeah, Egyptian Empire was like that for an extremely long time. The lesson here? If history teaches us anything, it is this. Always pay your mercenaries. Oh, and maybe don't invade Russia, because that never <laughs> seems to work. Yes. Really though, what I take away from this is that while the sea people may have had I would have somebody in West Russia and was like, where are my winter at? I need my winter. Hammered the final nail in the Bronze Age coffin, we have to look elsewhere for the root cause. But before we can do that, there is one other hypothesis that we have to discuss, which is that the Sea People came bearing iron. That they had a technological advantage which allowed them to sweep aside the Bronze Age kingdoms. In this scenario, okay. regardless of their motivation, they really would be the root cause for the Bronze Age collapse. Now, this was once a popular theory, but as our ability to date things has improved, it seems to have been largely disproven. There are some iron artifacts dating back to the period of the collapse, but it wasn't until two or three hundred years later that we really start seeing iron being used on any sort of mass scale. So it seems pretty unlikely that the Sea People well, won- We did see the iron before that, around the collapse, around the Bronze Age. I mean, oh, wait a second. Yeah, so if, if we did find iron around that place and just we didn't find it in masses, does, doesn't mean that there wasn't an empire. Uh, wouldn't bear iron, I guess. So, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we can't just, you know, I guess it lost sea people. Maybe the all the iron was lost in the sea, in the battle of sea or something. I don't know, it's a stretch, but yeah, they could have come with the iron weapons, right? So it's like, oh, we are the biggest empire here. We are the fucking Egyptians. We are Mycenaeans. Look at us. Oh, shit, they have iron. They have iron swords and everything. <laughs> 
it's like it's like playing the Skyrim, right? Uh, Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Whenever you play that, and you find an enemy that has, you know, you're walking out with a, you know, steel sword or something, and somebody comes with an orchid great sword, like ah, god damn it! If especially if you're playing at high difficulty by bringing iron weapons with them, or, as was once speculated, by procuring vast amounts of iron weapons in their initial attacks on the Hittites, and then using those to crush the surrounding kingdoms. So what does that leave us? Well, natural disaster is always a possibility, and there is evidence of natural disasters happening in the region around this period. But there had been natural disasters before, too, and we actually have a very well-established archaeological pattern for what happens when mm. natural disasters strike civilizations in history. The disaster happens, a bunch of stuff breaks, and then people rebuild and life returns to normal. It's pretty consistent. But in the Bronze oh, really? Age collapse, people just didn't rebuild. But imagine, it's remember what you said last time. The economy uh, is uh, consistent around the trading. If natural disaster happened, that, that thwarts the trading, right? So that would hurt the economy and the people. So because of natural disaster, eventually people would start to get poorer in a way they would start a chain reaction. That people get so poor that people start to die and civilizations start to die. And by that point, nobody's left around to make new stuff like that. And, uh, you know, technology is forgotten. It could happen. Like I said, you know, the Bronze Age was, uh, you know, based on the trading. So it's on the timing thing. So not, uh, you know, not that far-fetched from what we have today right now. Even today, our economy is based on timing. If entire world's economy thwarts for a few months, that's a very disastrous. This is similar to that. Cities we found that got leveled, for whatever reason, they just were not rebuilt. Instead, we start seeing new pockets of civilization appearing on mountaintops or secluded regions far away from the sea. This implies to me that while natural disasters may have contributed to the chaos of the collapse, they weren't the root cause. And judging from the locations that society appeared to retreat to, it seems that those who survived were far more afraid of the sea people than they were of nature's whims. So what about disease then? What if some sort of plague weakened these civilizations? Well, again, there is some evidence for disease in this period, but it seems to be a result of the collapse rather than the cause of it, happening after the fact and worsening the result. Which leaves us with the last possible sweeping cause, famine. This argument seems the strongest to me. Shortly before this period, there is evidence of volcanic eruptions happening, eruptions strong enough to cause change to the climate. And though there is some dispute as to whether this specific climate change caused it, there are also records of... That is what I kind of said. Natural disaster will throw the economy in a way that, you know, a volcano erupts. Famine follows it. That is part of the natural disaster. That is the whole point. A natural disaster probably killed the civilization. That would work. Drought and famine across the Bronze Age kingdoms around this time. And ongoing drought can explain almost everything else on this list. Drought forces people to migrate, which in turn brings them into conflict with other people in more fertile lands. Lower nutrition means country. higher likelihood of disease. Reduced governmental revenue means the inability to pay mercenaries or maintain armies to fight off invasions. And lack of resources means that towns don't get rebuilt after natural disasters, especially if their once fertile fields are now fallow and people revolt as their kings and pharaohs no longer seem to be able to protect them or to guarantee a good harvest. But even if famine and drought were the root cause, which is still a big if, as historians are still vigorously debating this, why was the collapse so complete? Why did it lead to a dark age that took humanity centuries to pull itself out of? Join us next time as we talk Not about the necessary. theory of systems collapse and how all of these pieces might fit together to create the end of an age. I mean, we need to understand that this happened around the time where civilization that we think of, I guess, uh, was really new, writing and everything, right, around this time. So this, this is literally beta stage, let's just say, about this kind of civilization. Uh, you know, writing and everything was kind of relatively new and everything that we know of relatively new. We think of Greeks as the, you know, the oldest civilization we can think of normally. People who doesn't know much, much of history thinks that. But this precedes, precedes the Greeks. That's when this civilization was around, Bronze Age civilization. So this was around the time where all of these things were newer. So something disastrous happening and we forgetting everything until it comes back again. It's not that far-fetched to think. Because writing, you know, architecture might not be that easier that we would think. Like, okay, people must know the knowledge of that. Even if the 10% of population survived, they must have just carried over it. No, not necessarily.
Around that time, small it, it, it was hanging around with small thread. If civilization, you know, plummets somewhat, it would basically collapse because you know, like he said, that you know, it took uh, real money to make sure there are people who can read and write. Real money into making shit and things like that. So if a uh, you know economy collapses, just learning becomes harder. So writing goes out of the window. If writing goes out of the window, and people who knows how to write and shit goes out of the window, you enter, I guess, dark ages somewhat. Even if it was completely, even if it was not completely bad, still writing goes out of the window. You enter the dark age, and by then it's just a guessing game. So I don't know. Bronze Age collapse is kind of understandable since something like Mongols that happened, to, you know, just you know, I guess a few centuries ago to us. Bronze Age, something I like see people would have happened. Society would have collapsed. It enters somewhat of a dark age before the Greeks arrive, and I guess everything started again. It's not that hard to think. Alright, people, that was the Bronze Age collapse, fire and sword by the channel Extra Credits. If you like my and don't like subscribe. Check out the Rick Sandy that's selling this season. Check out the castle, basically in cards, and yeah, check out my Twitter account. Follow me there, and yeah, I'll see you next time.